only on financial news and talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media, this is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take. How your family or your business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. We have a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof over your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. But before we get to our intriguing content, let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. And yes, of course, we are celebrating today. We celebrate every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Boy, we've had a, we, we, we have to celebrate a lot today because there are some missing, we, we missed a few here. Over the weekend, National Cream Filled Donut Day, Eat a Hoagie Day, Cheese Toast Day, Linguini Day, Double Cheeseburger Day, that one's for Blake, Cream to Mint Day, that one's for Christy, uh, I don't know about, the, we'll give Mindy a Wife Appreciation Day, National Play-Doh Day, today, let's see if we can figure out what we're going to celebrate today, National Play-Doh Day. Cinnamon Raisin Bread Day, Step Family Day, Working Parents Day, Mayflower Day. I think we'll stick with Cinnamon Raisin Bread Day. Cover that with some butter on there. Boy, does that sound good. We might have to go for that one right away. Check the markets today. Been a little volatility after the strikes yesterday and uh, obviously the strike that started this morning. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 167 points. Ow! S&P 500 down 15, NASDAQ down 40 and a half, oil up $6.28 per barrel. We know that's because of what happened in Saudi Arabia yesterday. See what happens in Iran in the next day or two. But what does that mean for us? Gas prices, 256.4 is the national average for a gallon of gasoline in Calizuela. We're over a dollar a gallon more than that, 363.1. In Hawaii, they're about the same, 364.6. And if you want the lowest price gas in the land, Mississippi. Drum roll, please. Yes, they are at $2.18.9 compared to about a dollar and a half more, dollar forty-five more right here in Calizuela. Unbelievable how we keep doing this. Hey, at least we keep voting for the same people. We think we're going to get something different, but no, we won't. The U.S. 10-year Treasury dropping back right now. Again, that has a lot to do with Saudi Arabia, the activities over in Saudi Arabia, the bombing, or the, the apparently it looks like the bombing from Iraq or Iran that came in the last... Over the yesterday, I guess it was yesterday morning, their time. So it had been Saturday night, I think it was our time. Uh, I wonder what's going to happen. We'll see what the president does now. It's going to be do or die. Drawing a line in the sand. Is he going to protect our allies, or or is Iran going to get off on this one? So we'll be watching that one as well. U.S. stock futures. Obviously, we knew that they were going to be going lower this morning. Gasoline going higher this morning. We knew that one was going to happen as well. The the oil prices taking a big jump. 5% of the world's oil, half of Saudi Arabia's exports were involved in that attack, drone attack there. And now the uh, U.S. Department of 
Uh, Secretary of State has come out and said, you know something, it did come from Iran. Don't know who did it, but Iran, the, the attack started in Iran. They came from the north. Uh, the Yemen claims responsibility. They're the ones in the south, so it couldn't really have been Yemen. We'll see what happens there. But we're going to watch the oil prices. President Trump already said that he will release enough oil from the U.S. strategic preserves to offset the cut from Aramco, Saudi Arabia's national oil company, cutting 5.7 million barrels per day, about 50%, again, equivalent to about 5% of the global oil supply. The president also said the U.S. is, quote-unquote, locked and loaded, but is waiting on Riyadh to determine who launched the strikes before proceeding on a course of action. Again, Yemen's Houthi rebels claimed responsibility for the attack. We know now that probably is not true. ExxonMobil, Chevron, energy, other energy stocks getting a boost in their share prices. Short-lived. If I was a trader, which I am, you may end up seeing some shorting of those stocks. Just throw that out there for you. What else is going on? 48,000 members of the United Auto Workers Union went on strike early today as contract talks with General Motors broke down the last time the union declared a strike. 2007, the two-day work stoppage estimated to have cost General Motors $300 million per day. Ow! Oof. We'll see what happens there. Oxycontin content maker Purdue Pharma filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, collapsing under the weight of thousands of lawsuits from states and individuals seeking damages stemming from the opioid crisis. Purdue's board approved the much-anticipated bankruptcy filing days after reaching a tentative deal to settle some 2,000 opioid lawsuits. See what happens with that one. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced a ban on all flavored e-cigarettes besides tobacco and menthol flavored in response to a recent nationwide spat of sometimes deadly lung illnesses that U.S. health officials have linked to vaping. Trump administration announced plans to remove all flavored e-cigarettes from store shelves. The committee of Boeing board members reportedly set to deliver its findings to other board of directors this week on how the company can design and build safer airplanes after those fatal 737 MAX jet crashes. Recommendations included changing corporate reporting structures, creating a new safety group, and changing the cockpits of future planes. UAE regulator not optimistic on the Boeing 737 MAX return this year. President Trump heading to New Mexico today for a campaign rally. Got an ambitious goal as the state has not voted for a Republican president since 2004. The Trump campaign argues it's still in play and has put it along with Nevada, New Hampshire, and Minnesota on a short list of states that Trump lost in 16 and is plotting to win in 2020. Oh, you got to love the New York Slimes. Yes, that's the new name of that newspaper, the New York Slimes. They used to have a reputation. Now it's just a bad reputation. They came out with a another one of their exposés. It was going to be the bombshell report that Justice Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh should be impeached because of sexual misconduct. The only problem is the New York Slimes never checked their story. The book that the New York Times or Slimes shamefully used, the author says she doesn't know anything about it. Her friends say they don't know anything about it. But the New York Slimes, they reported it, and now they've put a modification to their lying article. Hard to believe. They're walking it back. But you know something? It's funny because, ironic, not funny, the Democrat, the Democrat uh, candidates for president all jumped on the New York Slimes bandwagon and decided that, in, that Kavanaugh should be impeached. No due process when you come to the Democrats these days and their, and their leadership. Unbelievable. <laughs> Look, you, you just have to realize that anything that comes out of the New York Slimes, you're not going to be able to be getting the truth. It's not actuality. And if it wasn't for uh, Molly Hemingway from The Federalist coming out and having read the book, which the New York Slimes obviously did not do, then nobody would have known about this whole issue being a farce from the New York Slimes. Unbelievable how they continue doing these things. They continue getting away with it. Nobody calls them out on this. It's just fascinating to me how nobody calls them out. Unreal. Man. 
What else is going on in the news today? I did notice a report. California, we've talked about this before, ahead of the rent control. Rents in Los Angeles and Orange Counties grow at nearly twice the inflation rate. That's a new article that was in the register. LA Orange County rent inflation at a 12-year high, 5.5% was the average yearly change for residential rent by CPI math, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Why is rent control a hot topic? Because of trends like this, the local consumer price index shows the cost of renting in Los Angeles and Orange Counties rising at a pace not seen in 12 years. Of course landlords are doing that. Why would they not do it when they know rent control is coming? You got to get the rent increases in before rent control. It always causes the same problems. And then you're going to start seeing, as we talked about before, that 7 8% annual appreciation of rent just because of rent control. So it's intended to help the renter But it's going to be a big, big help for landlords because they're out there. They're going to be making these issues a strength going into the the elections and the implementation of this entire mess. Just throw that out there for you. Hey, we got a couple of events coming up in the next week or two uh, for the real estate community. Everybody that's in attendance that registers online for these different events for the real estate community, affiliates as well. $100 $100 restaurant gift certificates. We're going to give you those out at the events. So make sure you're registered. This week we're in Orange County, California. Next week we'll be in Palm Desert. So if you haven't registered for those events, Ron Siegel Radio Events.com. Ron Siegel Radio Events.com. That's the place to get all of that information. What else do we see in the news? Well, we'll have to get back to it when we get back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, we've got a great broadcast lined up for you today. Things to avoid after applying for a mortgage. How to lower my credit card APR. That's your interest rate. How do we want to lower that? How can identity theft affect your FICO scores? Is auto loan refinancing right for you? We're going to talk about all of that today and more. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. On Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1. Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit? And the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? How does that make you feel knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information, and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO-certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home 
home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 018-69452. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Dow Jones Industrial Average, I should tell you, this is the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage. When you're ready for that next mortgage, Gold Star has the programs and the products. You've got the phone. Call them, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Dow Jones Industrial Average is now down 161 points. NASDAQ down 39.81. The S&P 500 down 14. And a half points. Ten year treasury is at 1.838, down six basis points. The US, the uniform mortgage backed securities, those are up 30 basis points. That would be a big, big jump, meaning interest rates are going down off of this news. The question is why? And there's a lot of issues in the news going on right now that nobody is talking about other than if you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio, our crack uh, uh, research team. They've got the information here. So stocks are lower. The reason for that is Saudi Arabia's oil industry was attacked on Saturday, causing them to cut their oil output in half. There is a flight to quality due to the news and mortgage bonds. Nicely higher to start the week, but this could be negative. But this could be a, a, a negative for bonds as well. Higher oil prices are inflationary. And if that persists, can pressure bond prices lower? Bonds were even higher earlier, gave up some of the gains. They're heading back up again, so it's a little bit of a roller coaster. A busy news week highlighted by new construction housing data, existing home sales, the Fed statement, and decision on Wednesday. And we better have a good strategy under going into these items. The Fed is expected to cut rates by a quarter of a percent, which can be good or bad for bonds, depending upon if it's viewed as inflationary. That's the big issue is more, almost everybody is planning for a quarter of a percent rate cut. But what's going to happen if there's a quarter of a percent rate cut? What does that mean? The, the, The important part will be the statement that comes after the, the announcement by the Federal Reserve. So if they're talking about the idea of inflation on the horizon, then he could end up seeing that the bonds go negative because inflation is not good for bonds. When bonds go negative, rates go up. The yields go up. So if the Fed comes out and says we don't have a concern about inflation or the inflation numbers are tame, well, then that could be good news for the bonds. So we have to understand and we have to share that information with you as to 
just because there's a quarter percent Fed funds rate cut, that does not necessarily have an impact on what's happening in the mortgage market. Now, we know that the mortgage bonds, according to Freddie Mac, they went up last week about seven basis points. They went from 3.49 to 3.56. We reported that to you last Thursday. We'll get another report coming up this Thursday. Now, Here's the way these things work is Freddie Mac does this survey and they survey their banks from Monday through or the the participants Monday through Wednesday. But the participants they want to get it done and get it off their desk so they don't have to worry about it and dealing with the, the with the with the Federal Reserve. So they're going to be reporting first thing today. What are the bonds doing this morning? Well, they're up 30 basis points. So we're going to probably see a a reduced interest rate when we get the numbers coming out at the end of the week. Now, here's the issue that no one's going to be talking about. The, the news doesn't get into this. So they talk about the Empire State Manufacturing Survey, which measures the health of the manufacturing sector in the New York region. That was released. Today's report came in at 2.0 for September, lower than market expectations of 4.9, and also lower than last month's 4.8. But what they do not talk about is the Cass Freight Index. It fell for the ninth straight month, dropping 3% in August. The weakness in freight and transportation seen both here and in the U.S. and internationally caused the index to drop. There are fears that this could cause gross domestic product, GDP, to go negative by the end of the year. This very well could co co correlate with a 2020 recession. So we've been talking about that right along, this CAS freight index. When you start seeing that freight is not moving or it's dropping or, or the movement of freight is diminishing, that's a leading indicator. Now, another indicator that's a very a strong leading indicator is the purchase of corrugated boxes. So some people look at the freight index, CAS freight index, that is one indication, but even and that's an early leading indicator. But even before that is if manufacturers stop buying corrugated, stop buying boxes, then obviously you know that there's some sort of a reduction of activity. Just with what some of the numbers that you need to be really watching out there. And as always, we do, we do, we keep an, keep an eye on what the charts are telling us also to see where we are toward the retracements. And I know that's technical for most of you. Most people are not going to be watching this chart activity. But that's why you need a great radio host telling you these things and that have that correlated into a team of people, right, that are going to be giving you information and t getting you locked in. And we've been about 90% accurate on when to lock them, when to fold them, when to hold them, all that kind of good stuff. And that's a great record. Some people don't listen to us. They kind of try and go out there and do it on their own. That becomes a little bit more challenging for folks. But hey, you know something? We subscribe to all these different services so we can bring you the best possible data. That's our job so we can share it here on Ron Siegel Radio. Whether you take action on what we're sharing with you, that becomes an issue for you. Now, we are looking that we're very, very close to the 25-day moving average. Once we get below that, we might hit that Fibonacci level at one at par 37, 376. So we're watching all of these different numbers for you to see where the bonds are going to go, and how you can profit from it. That's the most important part. How do you profit from what's happening in these markets? Uh, and how does it help your family? That's why I tell you at the beginning of every broadcast, we're, our job is to try and help you understand what the markets mean for you, what they can do for you. Just throwing that out there. Things, and that's the real-time real estate segment, again, brought to you by our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage. Again, give me a call, 800-306-1990. The team stands by waiting to help you with any of your borrowing needs. Things to avoid after applying for a mortgage. Once you found a home to buy and have applied for a mortgage, you're undoubtedly excited about the opportunity to decorate your new home. But before you make any large purchases, move your money around, or make any big-time life changes, call your loan officer, please. Someone will be able to tell you how your decisions will impact your home loan. Here's a list of the things you should not do after applying for a mortgage. Some may be obvious, but some may not. Number one, don't change jobs 
or the way you're paid at your job. Your loan officer must be able to track the source and amount of your annual income. If possible, you want to avoid changing from salary to commission or becoming self-employed during this time. Wait an extra couple of weeks. It shouldn't take you more than a couple of weeks to get a new loan, so figure that out. Number two, don't deposit cash into your bank accounts. Lenders need to source your money and cash is not really traceable. Before you deposit any amount of cash into your accounts, discuss the proper way to document your transactions with your loan officer. Number three, do not make any large purchases like a new car or furniture for your home. New debt comes with it, including new monthly obligations. New obligations create new qualifications. People with new debt have higher debt to income ratios, higher ratios make for riskier loans. Loans, and sometimes qualifi- qualified borrowers no longer qualify. Again, wait a couple weeks to get into that. Remember that even though you you may say, well, well they, they already pulled my credit report. There is something called a PCCR, pre-closing credit report. It's generally run within the last 72 hours of the loan process. So once you've got your, your closing disclosure, your CD, in many instances, that's when the closing departments are going to run a pre-closing credit report to check and see, well, did anything change from when we first got started? That's where these things are identified. Do not change bank accounts. Remember, lenders need to source and track assets. That task is significantly easier when there is consistency among your accounts. Before you even transfer any money, talk to your loan officer. Do not apply for new credit. It doesn't matter whether it's a new credit card or a new car. When you have your credit report run by organizations in multiple financial channels, mortgage, credit card, auto, etc., your FICO score will be affected. Lower credit scores can determine your interest rate, maybe even your eligibility for approval. Number seven, do not close any credit accounts. Many clients erroneously believe that having less available credit makes them less risky and more likely to be approved. I should get my friends out here. That is completely wrong. A major component of your score is your length and depth of credit history as opposed to just your payment history and your total usage of credit as a percentage of available credit. Closing accounts has a negative impact on both of those determinants in your score, the bottom line. Any blip in income, assets, or credit should be reviewed and executed in a way that ensures your home loan can still be approved. The best advice is to fully disclose and discuss your plans with your loan officer before you do anything financial in nature. They are there to guide you through the process. Let them earn their money. And you are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back... How to negotiate the best price when buying a home. How to lower my credit card APR. How can identity theft affect your FICO score? Got a lot to chat about today. Is auto loan refinancing right for you? All that and more. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. On Twitter, at ronsegal. And if you miss any part of our broadcast... Ron Siegel 1, Ron Siegel the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home. You're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. 
Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, seven-year interest-only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, you'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part. You still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or simply call 800-306-1990. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or any time at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. The real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text NEST, N-E-S-T, to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. If you already found your dream home, very, very great information for you. Some very, very great information for you. Text SLT Home Digest, no spaces. SLT Home Digest to 79564. Find out what the county recorder and the marketplace knows and thinks about your property. Again, that's SLT Home Digest. How to negotiate the best price when buying a home. That is the subject of today's real time real estate section. So you found the home you want to buy. If so, well, you may be ready to bid full asking price or even more to ensure you beat out any potential buying competitors out there. There is This is where emotions can sometimes outweigh logic. So before you jump in with an offer way above asking price, it's good to take a moment to consider if the house is also a wise investment. That's why you want a great real estate professional. Why is the home price negotiation so important? Even in today's real estate market, in most parts of the country, it's pretty hot. It's not often that a seller is not willing to negotiate. If not on the price, then on other matters, such as the closing date, including certain items like the barbecue grill, washer, dryer, etc. On the off chance that you're in a market that is not boiling right now, you could end up being the only buyer making an offer. If that's your case, there's a good chance you could end up buying lower than the listing price. Your realtor should understand your market well enough to help guide your initial offer. But here are some things you'll want to consider. How motivated is your seller? It's not often that a seller puts his or her house on the market just to see what kind of offers come in. Though it does happen. In large part, sellers want to sell, but some sellers are more under the gun. They've already made an offer on another home. They're, they're moving for a job or their personal situation has changed. That's why it's a good idea to ask their agent why they're selling. You may not get a direct answer, especially if their agent has urged them not to divulge this information, but it does not hurt to ask. Be realistic with your offer. 
Nothing is accomplished by going in with a low ball offer, except sometimes in the cases of foreclosures or when a home is significantly overpriced and been on the market a long time. If you go in too low, you're going to insult the seller. If your research shows that the property is fairly priced or your trusted agent is telling you it is, make an offer you feel comfortable with and that your agent believes is reasonable. If your offer does not elicit a meaningful counter offer from the seller, you know you went in too low, so try again. Once the seller believes you're capable of arriving at a price that is agreeable to them, they'll be willing to negotiate. Be ready to move on. If you can't put together a deal on the first property you like, do not worry. There will be many more homes for sale. It's very common to lose out on another buyer in today's market. It's just as common to end up finding a home a week or even a month later that you like even more than the first. Not getting that first home might be a blessing in disguise. Show some enthusiasm. Today's real estate market isn't really moving in a lot of areas. <coughs> it, it is really moving in a lot of areas. So the days of being coy about whether you like the house or not are over for now. Some of the um, over a million dollar markets, they're a little bit more uh, static on those properties. They're taking a little longer to sell. So you might be able to be a little bit more coy. These starter homes are still moving pretty quick. This is your chance to sell yourself and convince the seller that you will be broken hearted if you do not get this your dream home. Have a baby on the way. Talk about how you can see your baby taking their first steps in the hallway. Newly married, describe how it will be starting your life together here. Have family nearby. Make a point of describing joyous family gatherings in the beautiful backyard. You're basically letting the homeowner who has a relationship with the property know that that relationship will be carried on. They want to know that, that it's not the end of the line for that property. Don't get carried away, though. You want the buyer to know how much you love their home, but you don't want to be overcome by emotions. You've done your homework. You know what the home values are in the area you're searching, and you know how much you can afford, so don't allow yourself to get boxed into a price that is above your comfort zone. If you have chosen your agent well, this won't happen. Nevertheless, bad agents have been known to urge clients to accept counteroffers simply so they can stop working on the negotiation. Set your expiration date. When you make the offer, there's a space for putting a time limit on how long it's valid. Make this a very short period, maybe 24 hours. Having a longer period just invites competing offers, which is exactly what you do not want. Get creative. If the seller seems emotionally tied to a certain price on his or her home, instead of asking the seller to lower their asking price, ask for certain concessions, such as repairs that the owner contribute to the closing costs, or they leave the washer and dryer, the riding lawnmower, etc. While it's not uncommon for prospective buyers to believe the deal is sealed at the offer signing, in many cases, the negotiations begin afterward. If you've conducted a home inspection, you can ask the seller for a cash back credit at the close of escrow, which can help you complete the project yourself. You can also ask the seller for a credit to fix certain issues in the interest of offsetting closing costs about the purchase offer now. If you are a first-time home buyer, there's a little primer on all that paperwork that goes into making an offer. Your purchase offer is a written contract that you sign and submit to the seller. It is accompanied by a certain amount of earnest money, a small good faith deposit to show you're serious about buying the home. The written purchase offer indicates the amount you are willing to give the seller for his or her property. If you're working with an experienced real estate agent, he or she will typically provide a standard purchase offer form which you can complete, sign, and then hand over to the seller to sign. If you're not working with a realtor, be sure you are aware of state laws regarding the information the offer should include. Since your written offer forms the basis of a legal contract with the seller, be thorough. There are some important details you should talk to you through with your agent and make sure are accurately included on your offer, such as the amount you're offering for the home and your, how you will pay the seller. Contingencies to protect you if your financing falls through or if the inspection unearths major problems with the home. Conveyances such as whether the home will come furnished or unfurnished. An expiration date by which the seller must respond before your offer expires. Concessions such as any closing costs or other costs which you would 
The amount of earnest money you're offering, the size of your down payment. The earnest money deposit can range from about $500 to 5% of the value of the home, depending upon where you are and how interested you are in buying in the state of the market. Your earnest money is typically put towards your closing costs. However, if you enter into a contract with the seller and then breach that contract, you could stand to lose this money. Once you make a purchase offer, sign it and submit it to the seller along with your earnest money, usually done through the agent. The seller has the right to either sign your offer as is or make a counter offer or reject your offer outright. If the seller accepts your purchase offer, the offer becomes a contract and you are on your way to owning the home. If the seller counters your offer, you may choose to reject his or her offer or walk away. If for some reason you forget to specify contingencies in your offer, there are sometimes legal steps you can take to back out of the deal. Ask your agent what recourse you have. A lot of great information. The contract, we've talked about this last week with Linda Eisenman. There's a lot that goes in to the purchase contract. Your agent should understand it. If not, you need to find somebody that does because it is a significant purchase. You do not want any surprises. You are listening to Ron Segal Radio, discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, how to lower my credit card APR, how can identity theft affect your scores, what should I do about my FICO scores after natural disasters, all that and more. You can reach me anytime. Your off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Segal Radio on Twitter at Ron Segal. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Most businesses struggle to get the online reviews they need to get a competitive edge over their competition. Rex is a brand new technology that uses text messages to direct happy clients to your online review sites, Zillow, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, and unhappy clients to a private survey so businesses can win more customers. Try Rex today by going to www.meetrex.com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed-rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Seagull Lending team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you you a no obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1 800 306 1990. That is 1 800 306 1990. Great subject change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BRE and MLS 217037 and 145502 and Cal BRE 01869452 and 1866. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. 
Welcome back to Ron Segal Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Segal Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The Your Credit Matters segment today. Being brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. You have a credit report, it is wrong. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has these solutions for you. All you need to do is make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Our friend Jeff Sipes at Blue Water Credit and his team, they do a great job for the listeners of Ron Siegel Radio, making sure that the errors are removed from your credit report. That's the whole idea is get rid of the errors. Once the errors are gone, in many, many instances, you're going to find out that your credit scores have jumped. So we like to always make sure that we get rid of those errors and watch what's going on. The, you know, it's amazing. Sometimes I've, I've even seen it where people with similar names have that problem, is that their, their credit report ends up having a, an issue because they've got the same name as somebody else. When they've got that same name, John Smith, uh, uh, Juan Valdez. I know that's that's the that's not the the uh, the gas guy, or the the uh, coffee guy. Yeah, whatever. So all of those things they they get into that scenario, and you're just always going to be watching out to see what's happening, and find out where the benefits are. Get your ensure your your rates corrected. And again, as long as you've got those rates corrected, or, or the, the, the reports corrected, you're going to find a lot of benefits within for your family. And that's what we want to find out, is where we can find those different benefits that make sense. Just throw that out there for you. So what are the reports today? What are we dealing with today? I've got several different reports to share with you. Let's take a look and see how you can maybe save some money Let's look at the first one here. 10 ways to prepare and recover your FICO score after a natural disaster. FICO is always crystal clear when it comes to what affects your FICO score. Financial literacy, transparency are hallmarks of the success in enabling safe and affordable lending around the world. Every year, there is a featured blog reassuring consumers that incidents out of your control, like natural disasters or governmental actions, such as the most recent shutdown of the government, are not reflected in your credit reporting agency data and do not affect the calculation of the score. Unfortunately, events out of your control like natural disasters may lead to unintended results and actions that may hurt your, your credit and impact your long-term recovery. So we have this, cr- this guide to assist people in thinking in advance about a, how a disaster could impact their credit, which ironically could also be a lifeline to a smooth recovery. Sneak peek to the guide. Number one, be in the know about your current credit status. Number two, assess where you are financially. Consider automatic payments for your priorities. Do you have overdraft protection? Investigate your credit card over limit rules or protections. To recover from the natural disaster, five reasons. Before payments are due, start making calls to alert your creditors. Ask your creditors about your options. Time to reprioritize your expenses. Request a copy of your credit report as soon as feasible. Consider a credit monitor or identity theft protection service. Get the details if you want them by giving me a call at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Again, that is the Your Credit Matters segment brought to you by our friend Jeff Sipes and the team there at Blue Water Credit. So I always hear people say, how do I lower my credit card interest rates? How do you go about getting that done? Often the APRs on your cards are charging you are based on your FICO score. That's why I tell you all the time, monitor your FICO score. Make sure you know what is happening. However, if you have a good FICO score, you need to read the fine print of your credit card agreement. Your credit card company won't lower your APR just because you've been taking care of your credit. You need to call them and ask for them to lower that APR. A good course of action is to know your FICO score and have that handy. MyFICO.com. MyFICO.com is the place to get 
your legitimate FICO score. Do a bit of research by finding out common rates based on your FICO score. You can go to the FICO forums and ask other consumers what APR you should expect based on your profile. You may be surprised to see how many people are willing to provide insight and help. After you do some research, you should know what is a fair APR based on your FICO score. If your credit card company is unwilling to work with you, then you should consider transferring your balance to a credit card with a more favorable, attractive rate. When transferring a balance, you do want to look for a few things. What is the introductory APR rate the card is charging? What are the standard rates? Is there a transfer fee? If you cannot pay off the balance of transfer during the introductory period, then look for a card that also has a relatively low standard APR. Since you'll be carrying the balance after the introductory period is over, your finance charges can add up quickly if your standard APR is high. So make sure you're watching that on a regular basis. Just, again, lack of education, you know, it, it can cost you. And we don't want that to be the case when you are a listener of Ron Siegel Radio. We want you to know exactly what's going on at all times, how you can actually make your scores work for you, make the information work for you. But making the information work for you also has to do with understanding one of the big areas that can really hurt your scores is identity theft. We hear about that one all the time. Ow! Yeah. Getting your identity stolen is not bad enough. When a criminal steals your identity, he or she can also steal your credit score. Or they kill your credit score is probably more like it. Your FICO score is calculated using five factors from your credit score. The payment history, have you paid your past credit accounts on time? Amounts owed, how much money do you currently owe to lenders and creditors? Length of credit history, credit mix, and new credit. That is the inquiries. When an identity thief steals your identity, four of these five factors are at risk. If the thief takes actions that affect any of the four factors, your credit score could be in peril. Here's why. Payment history. If identity theft opens an account, i.e. a credit card, or takes out a loan in your name, the balance on the account or loan is not going to be paid. Since credit card companies typically report late payments to the credit bureaus after their 60 days past due, your payment history will start to suffer. Payment history accounts for 35% of your score, so one missed payment could start bringing your credit score down a lot faster than you might think. Amount owed. Chances are if a criminal gets your card using your identity, they'll max out the card. This will increase your credit utilization, which is in the ratio of your outstanding credit card balances to your, your card limits. Since amount owed accounts for 30% of your FICO score, a high credit utilization over 30% can negatively affect your score by as much as 45 points. Length of credit history in general, a longer credit history, how long you've been using credit, should help increase your FICO scores. When a criminal takes your personal information and gets approved for a number of credit cards or loans in a short period of time, the length of your credit history will significantly decrease. This factor accounts for 15% of your score. And new credit, there's a limit to how many credit cards or loans a thief can obtain in your name. However, every time he or she applies for a credit, you receive a hard inquiry on your credit report. Each inquiry can lower your score by about five points, and all inquiries remain on your report for two years. Keep an eye on all your financial accounts. Use strong passwords. Think about a credit monitoring service. Place a fraud alert on your credit reports, and consider a credit freeze. Those are all ways of helping you deal with the issue of stolen identity. So once you've make, made sure that your credit scores are doing well, some people will look at it and as you increase your credit scores from over time, one of the big issues to always look at is how what you can do, how you can, can imp improve your situation. Now we talk all the time on Ron Siegel Radio about the idea of getting a home refinance and right now I'm, I am not re, re um, suggesting people refinance. I am suggesting get started in the process. And if, as I believe, the interest rates do come back down a bit, you'll be ready to act. 
So if that's the case, if my forecast is correct, you're going to want to make sure you get involved in that right away. But here's the issue. When you're getting involved in getting your that the home mortgage refinanced, what about your car? Have you thought about refinancing the car? A lot of people say, well, I can't refinance a car. I've got another three or four years left on my, my payments. Well, that's not true. You can refinance a car just like a house. You need to get the information, though, so you understand what makes sense for you. You have to understand where your credit score is. If you are a member of a credit union, Credit unions are great for doing these kind of things. They're, they're constantly looking for ways to make money for their members. They're not as big as the big banks. Refinancing an auto loan, just like a home loan, means replacing your existing loan with a new one from a different lender. Could be your same lender. Your current loan gets paid off by the new lender, and you start making monthly payments, hopefully smaller ones, on the new loan. If you think your credit has improved since you bought your car, you should look into auto loan refinancing. Good chance you can lower your interest rate, end up with a smaller monthly payment. You might also be able to shave some time off the loan. If you keep the payment the same with a lower interest rate, you're in essence going to be paying that loan off sooner. In most instances, it's free. Go into that bank or credit union, ask them. More often than not, it's free. Why you might want to refinance, again, paying less payment, less interest, less time. All of those are options. Car dealers always mark up, or almost always mark up the interest rate. So once you go and get the car, you can go to your bank or credit union, see what they'll offer you, and that takes out that profit center that the car dealer had in it and might save you or make you a little bit of money. So we're always watching for how to save or make money. That's part of the benefits of Ron Siegel Radio. We want you to be on top of the market, knowing what the finances are available for you. And as always, I suggest and ask, maybe even plead, set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to John, who's engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We will talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.